Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 37 on using your Raspberry Pi microcontroller. We have a very exciting lesson for you today and what I am going to show you how to do is how to run the Raspberry Pi graphical user interface remotely. How to log on to the Raspberry Pi from a Windows machine and have the graphical user interface show up in a very nice fashion on your uh, Windows desktop. You can see that's what I'm doing here. I'm on a Windows machine and I can come in and I am logged on to my Raspberry Pi and I can come in and I can do hello and these are, let's see, my grades and I can say 30, 40, 50. You see, I mean, I can interact with this thing uh, very nicely through this uh, uh, remote graphical uh, interface. Now why would you want to do this? Well, a lot of times I might want to use my Raspberry Pi, but I might not want to have to come in and plug a monitor into it and plug a keyboard into it and try to find a try to find a mouse and get it all hooked up. Uh, if I can run it remotely, all I have to do is just plug in an Ethernet cord and power and then come in and log into it. We sort of showed you earlier on there was a, a sort of simple way you could do something not quite that good but you could use putty and you could come in on putty and put in the IP address okay and then you could come in and you could basically get through SSH uh, SSH shell you could uh, like putty you could come in and get a terminal window okay and so we could operate with it remotely through a terminal window but if you want that full uh, full graphics interface capability you need a program called uh, tight VNC good news is like all the things we do here it is free and I will show you how to install that so you need to bring up a terminal window Okay, and the first thing you need to do is sudo apt get and then install type VNC, type VNC server. So let me look, type VNC server. All right, you're on the Raspberry Pi, you're in a terminal window, you type in sudo apt get and install type VNC server as such. Okay. And you can see for me, it's already installed and it's already up to date. So mine went very quickly. Yours will probably take a little while. It might come up and say, uh, it's going to take this much memory. Do you really want to install it? And you say yes. And then after a few minutes, you should be up to where I am here. Okay, after you do that, you need to run it for the first time. And what you type in is type VNC server. And you only do this, I think, one time. All right. And when you do this, it's probably going to come back and it's going to ask you for a login password. This is not your Raspberry Pi password. This is just a password that you use for VNC server to come in and allow someone to connect to it. So you create sort of a, a uh, graphical user interface password. All right. So you do that, and then you should actually be ready to run uh, the tight VNC server. This is how you actually run it, and this is something that you would then want to do this step every time that you want to log in. So you would type VNC, VNC server, and then I put a 1 for screen 1, and then you got to tell it what size you want it to be sending to the other computer, so geometry. Okay, and I'm going to use 1920 by uh, 1080. If your screen size is something different, you could use something different. And then I give it a color depth, uh, and then I say 24 there, and then usually a DPI. And I think on the DPI, I am going to use 96. Okay, and now when you click this, it should fire up your VNC server. Uh, mine's already running, so I get the message that mine is already running. Uh, but just the one thing that you need to know is it's not, you're not going to really see anything on the Raspberry Pi because it's kind of running in the background. So there is nothing really that you are going to see uh, because it will just be running in the background. Okay, now that that is running, what you have to do is you've got to get a tight VNC viewer running on your Windows machine. So now we need to come back to Windows 
And if I come over here, what I want to search for is tight VNC viewer. And my top response is www.tightvnc.com slash download.php. So I come here. And then what you can see is that here is the download page. Download Tight VNC for Windows version 2.7.10. I have a 64-bit machine, so I will click this. And then you can see that the download begins. It will take a few minutes for this to download. Once it downloads, all you have to do is just click on it, and it's an installer. It will install it on your Windows machine. It'll just ask you a few questions. You just go all things. So mine's already installed, so I'm not going to uh, repeat it here, but you would just click here and then go through the installation. Once that is installed, you will then have this icon, Type VNC Viewer. You run that on your Windows machine. What you have to know is you have to know the IP address of your uh, Raspberry Pi. How do you get that? Well, on the Raspberry Pi, you type in ifconfig. I F C O N F I G I F config and that'll pop up and show you the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. You put the IP address in and then which screen you're using and so I put the colon one okay and then you say connect. This is that login this is not the Raspberry Pi password this is the password that you set up for VNC uh, type VNC server just a minute ago Okay, so I click that, and then boom, look at this. I now have my graphical user interface up and running on Windows from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that is just really, really, really neat. And like I say, I mean, this really, it's very snappy. It's not, it's not slow or sluggish. It really comes up and it is very, very usable, very snappy, very quick. Okay, now the one thing that might be helpful for you is this is such a useful program. What I like to do is I like to configure my Raspberry Pi where it will always boot up running VNC ser type VNC server so I don't have to every time start it up. I just want it to start up so that when I boot the Pi I can log into it from any of these other machines that I might want to log into it from. So to do that I'm going to show you how to do that and so we're going to clear this, get a clear, uh, go back to your terminal window and uh, the first thing that you are going to want to do is you're going to want to go to uh, your home directory and you can do that with change directory squiggle where am I I am in slash home slash pi okay now if I do an ls minus a the minus a shows you all the files the files you didn't know were there and the folders you didn't know were there you can see that there is a folder a hidden folder called dot c o n f i g so I want to change down into that dot c o n f i g Okay, now I'm in cn, uh, dot cn fig. Let's see what's in there. Okay, so we've got some stuff in there. And uh, what you want to do is you can see that I have a folder here called auto start. You might not have that. If you don't have it, you want to do a make mkdir and then auto start. Okay make directory auto start. Mine is already there. All right, mine is already there because I have done this before. Okay. Now, what do you want to do? You want to go down into that change directory auto start. Okay, change directory auto start. And now that I am down in auto auto start, let's see. Give me just a second here. Okay, so I'm. We are now in the auto start directory, and so what you need to do is you need to create a file called tight vnc dot desktop. Okay, let's look in mine, and you can see that I have this document called 
tight VNC dot desktop. So you will go nano and you will go tight VNC dot desktop. Okay. Boom. Yours will be empty because you just created it. Okay. But I'm going to take you through step by step. Capitalization is important. You have to do it exactly like what I have here. Open bracket, capital D, desktop, space, entry, end bracket. So you have a open bracket, desktop, space, entry, end bracket, capital D, capital E. And then type with a capital T is equal to application. And then name with a capital N is equal to type VNC get your capitalization exactly right there and then exec with a capital E is equal to VNC server so this is saying execute this VNC server I'm using screen one this is the geometry you can see that I'm using kind of a strange geometry here for the screen size you need to use a screen size that would be consistent with the Windows machine that you're on uh, you know I think the one that we used earlier would probably work best for you but you can play around with the geometry of the screen minus depth of 24 minus DPI of 96 and then start up notify equal false you have to get the capitalization exactly right. So get yours looking just like this. When you do that, then you do a control O, okay, and then an enter, and then a control X, okay, and then you're out here. Now, at this point, you would want to do a reboot. So you do sudo reboot, and your, boot, your Raspberry Pi will reboot. Okay, it's going to take just a second for that to reboot, but when it does, when it does reboot, the Pi should come up already running type VNC server. So then all I should have to do is just click on this in the Windows machine and I should be able to log on. Okay, it's just taking, it takes a few seconds to boot up. Okay, mine is just about there, and if you're following along with me, you will probably just about be there as well. Okay, I can see now that it is up, so I'm going to try to actually connect. I am 10.1.15.46, uh, and then a colon 1. If you don't know what to do there, if you are not sure what your IP address is, in the command line on the Raspberry Pi, if config, okay, a little different than Windows. This is your VNC, your type VNC password. Okay, boom. I get this error message. I don't know why, but it seems like everything else works, and so I don't worry about it. And then we come up. A couple of things here is is that you can actually scale. Like you can see, I have this scale. So as I resize the window, it resizes it nicely. Or you can go to 100%, which is however you had it set up in your screen dimensions. You can kind of still, you know, even after you've started it, you can get it, uh, you can get it looking good. Okay, so that is how you run a remote graphical user interface from the Raspberry Pi on something like a Windows machine. I just do this all the time. Uh, all the time. I find it very, very useful. Hopefully this lesson has helped you. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. If you might like my lessons, give it a thumbs up. Think about, about sharing the video or give me some feedback. Leave some comments. Let me know that people are actually watching these things. We will talk to you guys later.